When I was a baby, I was thinking about fighting. Before ISIS, I was thinking about fighting for the Kurdish people. Do you believe you killed members of ISIS? Alone, I killed maybe nine that I saw. When I killed one, I felt proud and happy, and I told everybody. Mm. Welcome back to the arena. I'm Michael Cora. Now, young women in Kurdistan are willing to kill and die for their people and their nation. They are inspiring, extraordinary. The Islamists hate them because to die at the hands of a woman prevents them, apparently, having fun with those 72 dark-eyed virgins in paradise. But I keep telling you, it's actually one 72-year-old virgin. Sun News is that Sarah McIntyre is here to discuss. They are incredible, aren't they, these women? Oh, it's so inspiring and so fearless. Mm. Um, yeah, they go, they go right in there. Uh, they've been formed, they call themselves the YPJ, or the Women's Protection uh, Unit, all mm. volunteer and all women. Yeah. They're actually, I said young women, there are older women too, more out of mm. desperation because they're so frightened of what might happen. The Kurds, I mean, Saladin, the, the great, mm. he was a Kurd. People mm -hmm. assume he, he was Arab or, or Turkey. He was a Kurd. They have this great martial tradition. If they were armed as well as ISIS, there wouldn't even be a, a, a battle. I mean, ISIS would be gone, but they're fighting often with Second World War ammunition and weapons and, and so on. Yeah, I mean, they're fighting with, with bad uh, weapons and they're, they're, fighting a, a group that's really got a lot of local support. Mm. So I was watching one documentary where they had, uh, you know, one town was controlled by the YPJ, yeah. and just across the horizon there was the black flag of ISIS fi fall, um, flying. So, oh, yeah. I mean, it's this, um, these are women that are on the front lines. They train themselves, they camp together, and they go out. They were also really instrumental in helping the Yazidis on, on Mount mm. Sinjar. They, that was really the YPJ that really led that effort. They were very, very successful successful uh, militarily as well. Mm. I mean, Kurdistan, and I'm sure most people, at least before this conflict, had little idea of what it was, and that's fine, I understand that, but they, they do seem to be extremely tolerant. They've welcomed Christian refugees. Mm -hmm. um, they, they're not, they're religious, but religion doesn't seem to be the centerpiece. They've been oppressed by so many, by Turks and Iranians and, and Syrians, Iraqis yeah. and Syrians, but they, 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 they have a state now, it is a real state. But what we're seeing at, at this point, within Turkey, where the Kurds have been oppressed, they've been told you have to be Turks. OK, they say, as Turks, will you protect our people over the border? No. And when they demonstrate peacefully, they're beaten up by the police and Turkish nationalists who combine to attack them. Yeah, I mean, there's been, I just think in the past couple of days, over 22 uh, protesters that mm. have been killed throughout Turkey that are screaming out, saying we need to help uh, these people that are along the border. They're being chased uh, by ISIS. Uh, they've left their homes. They're facing, you know, murder, rape, pillage, beheading. Mm. Um, and, and the Turks are dragging their heels. Oh, they won't get it. I, I want to broaden this out to the, the idea of women in the military. And I'll be honest with you, I, I always resisted the idea. I, I thought that if there were women fighting alongside men on the front line, it, uh, those men may want to maybe save a woman rather than a male colleague um, if they're captured. Of course, mm. rape is used as a weapon. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I, I was concerned about that. I, I, I think I've changed my mind quite a bit. We have some footage here, I think, some mm. Israeli girl soldiers too. Mm -hmm. And um, no, I think they're, they're Kurds, I think. I don't yeah, think they're Israeli. Can we see some of the... Uh, yeah, the, I think uh, these are the... I mean, the, the, I mean People joke about Israeli uh, girls because they're often very attractive and, and so on. But I mean, mm -hmm. that's just a, a silly male fantasy. But they are, um, they have very senior positions, mm -hmm. uh, senior officers in, in the IDF. We're involved in all sorts of areas, also in undercover work too. And uh, Israel did this not out of ideology, well, perhaps partly, but really out of necessity. They yeah. simply didn't have people at the beginning, 1948, mm -hmm. to compose their army. And... When we look at the more progressive nations in the world, if you look at the Arab world, the United Arab Emirates, that is more progressive, has a fighter pilot. Mm -hmm. um, it's not that progressive, but relatively so. Yes. Qatar, you wouldn't have that. Saudi no. Arabia, so they can't even drive a car. They're in the, there is a woman fighting, uh, piloting a, a jet fighter in Saudi yeah. Arabia. They're not even allowed to drive a car. Yeah, yeah, it's incredible. I mean, and they're, they're known to be uh, severely successful in their operations mm -hmm. as well. And um, they, do, uh, they do like the fact that they strike the fear uh, into ISIS militants because, yeah. as you say, if you're killed by a woman, uh, the, the thought is that they actually don't go to heaven. So, yeah. uh, and a lot of the women actually, uh, you know, wear that as a badge of honor. Yeah. And, and the, the bond and camaraderie uh, in a female unit, the YPJ's all-female unit, uh, is just as strong as it is with any other military unit. You mm -hmm. know, you go to battle with someone, you go to war with someone, uh, you don't really, it's not necessarily whether you're a man or a woman, or it's the fact that you've actually earned the battle scars together. Yeah. 
There was, we've just learned, uh, uh, we think at least, a Kurdish suicide bomber, a woman, just mm. the other day. And um, to stop ISIS entering her village, she, she used herself as a bomb. I mean, I think that denies our humanity. I understand mm. why she did it. It, was, it mm. wasn't for the, to spread the word of her ideology or religion. It was to prevent yeah. people coming in and murdering her, her family and, and friends. But it's still rather shocking and jarring, isn't it? It, well, it is. I mean, and certainly not done for martyrdom as it is with many other suicide bombers. Mm -hmm. It was perhaps the most effective way in order to strike at the heart of those that were attacking uh, her village. I don't mm -hmm. know the specifics on, yeah. on this no, I think one. That's true. But it, it does show you how frightened and how barbaric uh, the ISIS militants are. And if you know that they're coming into your village, what lengths you will go in order to protect your friends, your family, mm -hmm. and your village from uh, being besieged by these bar barbarians. Mm -hmm. ISIS have a, a female unit too. They're completely mm. covered, of course, and they go around enforcing Sharia law. And if they see any woman who is not living up to their standards, they will be beaten, uh, amputation, even killed. Mm -hmm. Very different type of military unit. I wasn't aware of that. Yeah, it, it, it is. There are, and there are also, and I find this to be just so repugnant, there are young women going to join ISIS because they, well, frankly, they're aroused by it. The violence and the, and, and the, the grotesque nature of, of what is done to people I think they find it rousing, and they go there to find men. Well, and it's also, I think, um, the, the aspect that there's not a lot of um, options or opportunity in that part of the world right now for anyone, whether you're a woman or, or a man. And ISIS obviously uses that as a recruiting mm. uh, weapon. And well, some a recruiting are going from tool. Europe, though. Yeah. There are women. There are actually Muslim women going from Europe to join ISIS in the Middle East. I, I, I can't. I cannot I explain that. I yeah, mean, no. I think that's a, a, you know, there's a real perversion of an understanding of what ISIS is all about. Once yeah. they get on the ground there, they may have a very different understanding as to what this ideology, this fascism mm. is really all about. It's interesting you say that because uh, one woman has come back, I think it was to the UK. I, I can't mm -hmm. remember, but she's come back and given an interview that when she actually got there, um, she just could not comprehend the level of violence and, and, and left it behind. And I still think she's a deeply troubled person, but at least she did leave it behind. Um, I mean, good luck, Godspeed to these women there, mm -hmm. because what they're doing is, and, and it's, they're doing probably what the Western power should be doing. People there, individuals on the ground stopping these people achieving Spreading their more. cancer. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, and they're doing it really as a revolutionary for, for women's rights as well. I yeah. mean, if you, if you look at some of the interviews, they say anything a man can do, we can do as well. So yeah. it's really, I think, empowering, and it's a, it's a right, message right. that you don't hear of quite often in that region. Well, you never hear it at all, really. Yes. I mean, outside of Israel, pretty much, you yeah. don't hear that at all. So good for them. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks.